Hello and welcome back to Skypothesis. For this week's build, we are excited to present the Desert Wind Exile. We've drawn inspiration from a variety of sources in the world of entertainment to create a fresh and unique character for Vanilla Skyrim. We believe that with the right amount of imagination and creativity, Vanilla Skyrim still has so much to offer even after all these years. Other RPGs may have better graphics and visuals, but none of them have ever scratched the roleplay itch like Skyrim. The player freedom is next to none, and we created this channel to share the ideas that have helped us achieve a deeper roleplay experience. So without further ado, we proudly present our next character, the Desert Wind Exile. Like the wind itself, the Desert Wind Exile cannot be contained by any creed, law, or nation. He fights like a force of nature and easily moves through the battlefield using his opponent's strength against them. He is a true neutral character and finds meaning and purpose in self-improvement and the pursuit of greater strength. He will follow his own path wherever the wind takes him. The Desert Wind Exile hails from the arid badlands of elsewhere. He was born under the waxing Masser moon and as such is a larger bipedal Khajiit with a jaguar-like build. He was raised as a lore-keeping monk in the Adeptorium of the Desert Wind. By his skill alone, he would have been next in line to be chosen as Grand Adept's successor, but his youth was filled with constant reprimands and disciplinary action for insubordination, kleptomania, and pranks on his elders. Perhaps he bonded too much with the element of wind, and it was only a matter of time before his own restless nature drove him away from his home. As the years of his youth passed, he came to understand that he could not fulfill his potential behind stone walls with his nose buried in scrolls. His soul longed to be on the move. The Desert Wind Adaptorium has a purpose beyond just guarding the lore of their people. They have a solemn responsibility to stand guard and defend their nation should the ancient evil sleeping beneath the ground ever wake up. Because he refused this tradition of defending his country, he was labeled an exile when he left. He is a true neutral character, but unlike other neutral characters such as the Greybeards, his neutrality is born out of selfishness instead of piety. He genuinely doesn't care for the plight of others, and only pursues his own improvement and self-mastery. In his travels, he has allied himself with mercenaries and thieves to earn enough gold to travel to his next destination. He turned down lucrative mercenary contracts for no other reason than he just didn't feel like it. On the other hand, he accepted jobs that paid little to nothing if they sounded more interesting. There seemed little rhyme or reason to these decisions and his traveling companions eventually realized they would never understand his motives. After leaving his adaptorium, he spent many years still and elsewhere learning from and practicing all the different varieties of Khajiiti martial arts. His path eventually took him outside of his home country and through Black Marsh, Morrowind, Cyrodiil, and into Skyrim. There are four styles or stances of Khajiiti martial arts. There's the steadfast and energy-focused Gout Fang, the quiet and lethal Whispering Fang, also known as Whispering Claw, the serene and graceful Desert Rain, and finally, the mystical and powerful Desert Wind. There's an entire quest line revolving around the Desert Wind in the Elder Scrolls Online, and the player gets to experience firsthand their Adeptorium and the vast network of underground caverns beneath the temples. In spite of the great representation in the Elder Scrolls Online, there is still so much left unexplained, and the Desert Wind as a martial arts style still allows for interpretation. 
It is described to have a strong focus on dual-wielding swords, but for this character, we've taken some creative liberties with other ways this style could be implemented in the world of Skyrim. We have chosen to roleplay the Desert Wind as more of a mystical, knowledge-seeking school of martial arts. They believe that fights can be won with little effort by exploiting enemies' weak points. They practice directing the wind itself by channeling their chi and harnessing it to glide through battlefields. They use their enemy's strength against them, separate them from their weapons, and render them defenseless by striking nerve clusters. The study of Desert Wind is less about physical prowess and more about knowledge. In combat, the Desert Wind Exile also implements the two unarmed fighting styles, Goutfang and Whispering Fang. Descriptions of Goutfang even include grappling moves, which lend themselves to the brutal unarmed kill cams in Skyrim, and Whispering Fang has a strong focus on stealth, which he makes frequent use of as well. Unarmed combat requires some getting used to, but can be a really fun and rewarding way to play the game. For this build, we roleplay that certain spells and shouts are ways that he focuses his chi and augments traditional unarmed combat. More literally, he uses enchanting to create powerful fortify unarmed rings and gauntlets, and alteration flesh spells for added defense. His close tie to the element of wind is represented in the shout cyclone and the destruction spell whirlwind cloak. Both are used to cause havoc, and they mesh well with his highly mobile and free-flowing combat style. Since unarmed characters can't block, whirlwind cloak acts as an extra layer of defense. When roleplaying as this character, you have to suspend your disbelief a little bit more than normal, as there's only one or two standard punching animations, aside from the fabulous kill cams. Also, remember that he has a strong focus on movement, so change positions frequently to gain the terrain advantage on enemies. We do make occasional use of a glitch in this build to roleplay his cat-like ability to scale walls and cliffs. If you retrieve Klimek's supplies from High Hrothgar, after retrieving the reward money from Klimek, you can then use the bag to climb vertically. There are lots of videos on YouTube describing how to do this, and we found it's really fun in certain situations, especially during the quest Imitation Amnesty, in which you have to sneak into the Arl of Whiterun's private quarters. It is much more fun to scale the outer walls of Dragon's Reach and slip in through the upper balcony. This glitch requires some practice to pull off, but it opens the doors for some really fun roleplay moments. For questlines, the only mandatory ones are the Thieves' Guild and Main Quest, at least up until you reach Skyhaven Temple. He is all about self-mastery, and Skyrim is filled with ancient knowledge that he can learn from and spiritual havens where he can meditate. His egotistical nature contributes to his belief that stealing, when done successfully, means he has earned the right to keep the stolen goods. This is one of those characters that can roleplay any of the quest lines. It's entirely up to you to determine what this Khajiit would do, as long as the quest provides a way to test his skills and improve his strength. Now let's discuss creating the character. The Desert Wind Exile's armor is comprised of the Black Guard's armor, Linway's boots, an Alikir hood enchanted with Fortify Alteration and Fortify Magicka, a ring enchanted with Fortify Unarmed and Fortify Health, an amulet enchanted with Fortify Alteration and Fortify Health, and finally, the Blades Gauntlets enchanted with Fortify Unarmed and Fortify Magicka. In addition to looking super cool, the Blades Gauntlets are heavy armor, which allows us to use the perk Fists of Steel for even more damage. When combined with the Khajiit's unarmed bonus, the damage adds up fast. It's viable right out of the gate, so head straight to the Rift and Sewers to get the enchanted gloves off of Gion the Fist. This gear ensemble was chosen entirely for aesthetic purposes, but there are enough enchantable pieces that it's completely functional. For his spells, he will mainly use Whirlwind Cloak, Telekinesis, Ash Shell, Paralyze, and Ebony Flesh. The shouts used include Disarm, Cyclone, and Marked for Death. Marked for Death is an extremely important shout for any unarmed build, as it provides an additional way to scale up your raw damage. For the roleplay, this represents knowing where to strike his opponent's weak spots. For the stats, we recommend a ratio of 1 Magicka, 2 Health, and 1 Stamina. For the Standing Stone, we recommend the Atronach. Another good option is the Steed Stone for the unhindered movement, but Atronach is definitely best in slot. By the time you hit level 40, you will want the following perks. In Enchanting, you will want all 5 perks in Enchanter, Insightful Enchanter, Corpus Enchanter, and Extra Effect. In Alteration, you will want the Novice Through Expert perks, 3 perks in Magic Resistance, 
Dual Casting, Stability, and Atronach. In Sneak, you will want all five perks in Stealth, Muffled Movement, Light Foot, Silent Roll, and Silence. In Destruction, you will just take the Novice through Adept perks for the Whirlwind Cloak spell. No other Destruction spells are used, so no other perks are needed. In Smithing, you will take Steel Smithing and Arcane Blacksmith. This is done to upgrade your armor for additional defense to stack with the Alteration Flesh spells. For Heavy Armor, you will take one perk in Juggernaut and the perk Fists of Steel. And finally, in Alchemy, you will take three perks in Alchemist, Physician, and Benefactor. This is done mainly to make healing potions, but Invisibility and Fortify Alteration potions can be super useful as well. If you plan to play past level 40, we recommend adding a couple more perks to Alchemy, as the Fortify Enchanting and Fortify Smithing potions will help you make even better gear for late game. And now moving on to our favorite part of every build, the special moves. First, we have Paralyzing Palm, which is the Paralysis spell, but cast at a point-blank range. This chi-blocking strike is unique to the Desert Wind Adepts. Imagine Ugwe stopping Tai Lung from acquiring the Dragon Scroll in Kung Fu Panda. For the roleplay, don't use Paralysis as a ranged spell. Get up close and use it as an unarmed strike. Next is Even the Odds, which is Disarm and Telekinesis. With a blast of raw chi, rip your opponent's weapons from their hands into yours. To take it a step further, you can equip the item and use it against them. There is nothing more humiliating than being killed with your own weapon. You can also choose to throw it back at them for damage or toss it far outside the battlefield where they can't pick it up again. His final move is Hyper Focus, which is Whirlwind Cloak, Slow Time, and Ash Shell. When overwhelmed, cast Whirlwind Cloak, use Slow Time, and then immobilize all enemies with Ash Shell except for the one that you need to take down. In this moment, the Desert Wind Exile moves with the speed of a tornado and pummels down an enemy with a flurry of quick strikes. And with that, we are ready to wrap up the Desert Wind Exile. The Khajiit are a fascinating race, and unarmed builds are a ton of fun. We wanted to give our version a strong focus on aesthetics and roleplay, and this character was an absolute blast for us. Thank you so much for watching our videos release so far. This build marks the end of Season 1. We've loved reading your comments on what's made Skyrim the most immersive for you, and we're excited to continue exchanging ideas in Season 2. If you like what we do, be sure to like and subscribe, because we'll be back in a couple weeks with more builds to share. We'll see you next time, right here on Skypothesis.